AC detainees suffer, but their family suffer even more. It was 10 days before the family was told they could visit their father. We saw a big police truck drove into the police station. The back door was opened. We saw a man handcuffed, blindfolded. That moment, is, it was so difficult to describe. He has lost so much weight, so thin, and um, I think all he asked was, how were we and how was my brother? I think the, the, people, the person that he worried the most is my brother, Guaning, who was detained, don't know where, you know, for him. He, he, he doesn't have any news of him. Then uh, he was taken back again to where we do not know. He didn't even know himself. After 60 days, Kit Xiang and Guan Eng were both sent to Kamunting detention camp. After about a year, batches by batches of detainees have been released, but not both of them. They were actually the last to be released. These 18 months is actually the darkest moments in our family. And because uh, the food was not very good, we had some uh, health problems, we were admitted to the Taiping Hospital. And it happened that uh, there were only two of us in the ward, my father and me. So the family came to visit us. And uh, it was just like we were having a family together. A family get together, even though it was in hospital, under the prison setting. Everyone was there, everyone was laughing, everyone was uh, having fun. We all forgot we were in prison. So by then, the very last few months, I remember telling my dad, if you're still in, I do not know how long. <laughs> I do not know how long I can continue. It was actually very tiring for me to drive all by myself. But luckily, they were released after 18 months. But it was over now. Guan Eng and Kit Xiang were ultimately released in April 1989. With an election again looming, Kit Chang was immediately given a new challenge, to stand against Penang's seemingly invincible Lim Chong Yu, the man who had reigned as chief minister for a record 21 years. There was a decision of the Penang leadership, because it was felt that if we are going to make a bid for the Penang uh, uh, state government in uh, 1990, the strongest candidates in uh, Gerakan must be uh, defeated. So the whole team in, the, in, in my movement is in order to, st to strengthen the DAP's chances, the possibilities of, uh, of making headway, rather than uh, nothing to do with the personal consideration as well. I was fighting at a grave uh, disadvantage. It was highly high risk. Against all expectations, Kit Chang beat the veteran chief minister, and the DAP took 42% of Penang's state seats, just short of forming a governing majority. But in the 1995 election, voting swung in favor of the ruling coalition. Only nine DAP candidates remained in parliament, and there were more worries ahead. Lim Guan Eng had adopted his father's tradition of speaking up for victims. In 1998, Guan Eng was sentenced to an 18-month jail term for seeking justice for an underaged rape victim. If you say that Lim Ki Siang is doing everything just to promote his son, which father wants to send their son to prison? What, what do we get? That was really tough for him, and um, I think he felt that uh, responsible for Guanin going to prison. He didn't say anything to us, you could see it, and we could feel his pain and his um, suffering. And it was an extremely difficult time for the family.
And there was a further blow to come. In 1999, the DAP entered a new alliance of opposition parties, energized by a surge of discontent over an economic downturn and the incarceration of Guan Eng and former Deputy Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. The Alternative Front won an unprecedented 47% of the vote, but it was not reflected in the seats won. And it was a shock to DAP. Kitsyang lost his seat in Parliament for the first time when he moved from three-term Tanjong constituency to Bukit Bendera. And who would have ever expected Lim Kitsyang to lose in an election? He lost in 1999. A man who beat the chief minister of Penang, you know, Dr. Lim Chong Yu, in 1990, loses in 1999, loses his parliamentary seat. It was a devastating loss. It hurt him deeply, but that did not stop him from going to the counting centre to congratulate his opponent and to thank his supporters and people who helped him during the general elections. The fact that he could face such loss with such dignity touched me deeply. Because all his life, he's been involved in politics, one way or another. And uh, I was worried that, uh, you know, uh, whether he could cope with life without politics. But he did. But he did. Yeah. But that was, you know, a, a difficult time for him. And I think that would have been one of the darkest, darkest moments of his life. But he took it in the stride. And that was the verdict of the people. It had to be accepted. It had to be accepted. He had been MP from 1969, uninterrupted until 1999, lost it. I find one quality which is very remarkable in Kit Siang. That is, he doesn't have or show any bitterness. Kit Siang has faced defeats, disappointment, betrayals even, vilification by people, but I have not seen him complaining. And one of the places we suffered badly, we lost badly in 1999, was uh, Perak, Valley. So that was where I went in 2004 to contest in uh, uh, Ipotimo in order uh, to carry the whole offensive of the DAP in Perak. Kitsyang took Ipo Timur with a majority of more than 10,000 votes. The DAP won 12 parliamentary seats, emerging again as the main opposition party and returning Kitsyang to parliament as opposition leader. But in Penang State Assembly, the DAP retains only one seat. The dream of forming state government had slipped beyond reach. Or had it? My father has been fighting for more than 40 years for a Malaysian Malaysia. And he has never given up on his dreams. He always tells me that nothing stays the same. Things will eventually change. And you can never give up. As 2008 dawned, that change was about to come. DAP embraced social media to overcome the traditional media blackout. Of course, in the very early days, in the, 80, in, in the, in the 1995, when I started the, my, my, web, my web page. I think the importance of the blogs, the Twitter or Facebook is that there is the, a medium to be used in order to reach out a larger group of people of all ages so that they can get uh, our message, especially very important in uh, Malaysia with the control of the mainstream media. And Kit Siang worked with other opposition parties to thrash out a joint election strategy. Uh, my experience with uh, Webby Kit Siang, of course, is extremely smart, very experienced, and um, very attentive, uh, despite the fact that he has been uh, known to be a very uh, tough uh, leader. He's, he's a very good listener. And unlike me, I, I will probably express my views first. He will choose to listen uh, and then will come up with some of uh, uh, the issues of concern, but uh, very reasonable. And he was, uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, one of the main pillars. Kisang is the master strategist and tactician of the DAP. 
but his real strength, and I think a lot of people outside party are not aware, is his ability to analyze issues. He can just see the issue so clearly and put things in just sometimes even just a few sentences. And that is why, as I said, you know, in the party, people sometimes just will accept whatever he says, and not because he's the man, but the ideas he put forward are just so simple and clear-cut for you to see. In 2008, the party also brought in young professionals to join their candidates. Whenever Mr. Lim he has interaction with the younger generation, young people like me or any other young members, he, he will always listen first. He will ask for their views, ask for their opinions. He will ask like put questions like, okay, what do you think? What is your feeling towards these incidents? What do you think we can do now? What do you think we could have done earlier? The result has been called a political tsunami, the biggest gains ever made by a Malaysian political party. For the first time since independence, the ruling coalition was denied the two-thirds majority required for constitutional changes. And in Penang, a dream that seemed lost had been made reality. In the most dramatic political comeback imaginable, Lim Guan Eng stood in Penang and achieved his father's dream, leading the DAP into a majority in Penang in coalition with PKR and PAS to be appointed Chief Minister of the State. Kit Young's 30-year effort has finally borne fruit. The DAP had won the opportunity to demonstrate it has the skills to govern, to govern on behalf of all races equally, to show they're not just a one-race party, to demonstrate Malaysian Malaysia, a Malaysia for all Malaysians. And my birthday wish was that uh, we can succeed in Penang and uh, the Guanyin can succeed and lead uh, Penang to become the chief minister. And the birthday wish has come true. Guanyin should thank his father, I think. Kitchen came in 1986, stood for elections, you know. Tried many a time, Tanjung 1, Tanjung 2 and so forth to come to power. Except in 1990, he made it very close. Just two seats short of forming the government. He beat Lim Chong Yu. Nobody ever thought that Lim Chong Yu could be defeated. He worked very hard. First time fail, second time fail, and still he was determined. Third time fail, but he never lost heart. DAP would not be where it is today without people like Kit Siam. Many people join DAP because of Kit Siam. He made us believe that change and the miracle of hope. Is possible. He provides hope to the Malaysians, to people who want to see change in the country, who want a better society, who want to see corruption being unearthed, who want to see scandals being exposed, who want to see the downtrodden to have a voice spoken up for them.